Season 2, Workspaces and People. We are at Fun Move in Amsterdam. MP is a huge fan. I want a bike too, so I need a race because otherwise it's going to be difficult. But let's see, I heard they also have a renting model. So let's take a look. Yes, it's all part of the game. So the first thing we did was take out all the walls in between. This is where the musical heart of Amsterdam is sticking. That's this place and we're a part of that. The more free you are to move around, the more creative you get. Workspaces and People Season 2 here on YouTube. Maybe this is the showroom and we need to go in the office, but let's check it out. Hi. I'm not sure this is it's the office, is it the other way? We have a date with no, no, Caroline. No, okay. yeah, yeah, I will tell her. A perfect um, Katinka. Okay. Thank great. you so much. Hey. Yeah. Hi. 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 So nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Do you want to come upstairs? So, yeah, absolutely. Hang on. So, let's get started. Um, yeah. Thank you for having us. Of course, uh, thanks for coming. Both. Yeah, um, Caroline uh, showing us the space and the brand and the mm -hmm. bikes. We're very excited to hear everything about the future of bikes. Oh yeah. Um, and maybe see a little bit of the workspace and the vibes you get in here. Because yeah. on one hand, it's very, um, yeah, it's very technology uh, driven, but you also get a good, I mean, you know, good feeling when you when you enter the building. It's very very light mm -hmm. um, and you also said that you're in the middle of a transformation process yeah yeah it's an interesting time to come along yeah um, yeah we're well I'll show you the office in a minute mm -hmm. um, we're in a transition we grow very fast we've been growing very fast yeah. uh, in the last couple of years when I came here two years ago this was the office space okay. only here wow and there were other companies sitting on that side and now all that is so you turned on the walls or uh, yeah yeah we broke through and there are other offices working here of other companies yeah. uh, and now it's all us uh, so this also means that we have so many more people too many people too few desks at this mm -hmm. moment um, and we're still growing uh, so in the next couple of months we'll be extending uh, and expanding like, making new office spaces in the in nice. the room that came, the, all the rooms that came free. Yeah. So, what tell us a little bit uh, for all those who don't know Van Moof, mm -hmm. um, who are not cycling daily, like yeah. in Amsterdam through wind and storm. I, I, you know, I experienced that myself. Five years of cycling. Yeah, I think three you know hours it. almost day because I live far away. So wow. one and a half hours here, like one way, the other way. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of cycling. Uh, what is Van Moof, and uh, what do you do different? Okay, uh, well we're a bike company uh, and we say a bike meets tech company mm -hmm. uh, because our goal is to get the next billion on bikes okay. uh, and for that we've rethought what a bike does uh, and what it can do. Uh, so we integrated um, all the smarts and tech and like, updated a bike's design to the 21st century. Wow. So that means um, uh, anything that can break on the outside, we put it inside, all mm -hmm. the lights are integrated. It recognizes you as a rider, so it wakes up when you approach your bike. Oh, wow. You don't need keys, because when you um, park your bike, you tap the back wheel. I can show you later. Uh, and then the wheel blocks. Yeah. Uh, and when you walk away and you're not around, if someone else approaches your bike, then the alarm sensor goes off. Oh, my God. Um, I so want one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's designed to make the ride more effortless. Mm -hmm. uh, we designed the whole bike ourselves. They're electric. You mm -hmm. can't see it from the outside, because everything's integrated. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're also uh, taking away the worry of bike theft. Okay. Uh, there's integrated um, anti-theft tracking, mm -hmm. and we promise our riders, that's what we call peace of mind, we promise if your bike gets stolen, we'll find it back. Wow, I think I saw a YouTube video on that. Uh, it's probably yeah. yours, right? Every so now and I, then we film our bike hunts and then we right. post it on YouTube. Nice, yeah. that would probably be uh, MP's dream uh, film tour to hunt um, fun more. <laughs> well, I think bikes we're still hiring. It down. Yeah. Okay, well, don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, so that means basically my bike gets stolen. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Uh, you um, click the button in the app and say, Help, my bike got stolen. Yeah. Um, and at that point, our bike hunters will get a signal uh, and they'll go to work. Who's a bike hunter? Like they, they I can introduce here. you to some. We have 17 okay. across the world. A couple okay. are here. Yeah. Um, and what they do is they track the, the signals, yeah. the location signals of the stolen bikes, and then they plan 
uh, retrieval mission. Yeah, nice. Yeah, well, and in I would practice, love to, I would love to uh, to meet someone. Yeah, yeah I will, I will introduce you and maybe yeah hear a little bit about the work. Yeah. Cool. So how many people are you right now? And um, uh, in total, internationally, I think Takwa is 140. Mm -hmm. Takwa Finder, he kept and uh, here keeps track. in the office. Here we're about Sebastian. How many people are we here? Fifty. Yeah. Fifty. Yeah. yeah. And the space you just mentioned, you started in this office, yeah. which is now looks like a um, almost like a cafeteria where you meet. Yeah, this is where we have lunch together. Uh, we have uh, Nadia; she's our queen of happiness. She makes sure everyone is fed and has nice. what they need. Um, and then we share lunch here uh, during the afternoon, and then throughout the day, I was just working there because it's nice and quiet, and I like the view looking outside. Yeah. Um, so anyone can just use the space. Yeah. And um, well, just tell us a little bit, like regarding the office. You tear down the walls here because this was a space before, and then you grew. Yeah, and this was one space, um, and this was still open. Uh, but there were other companies working there. Yeah. Uh, and now those companies have left, and that gave us more room. Uh, and up until the beginning of this month, there was one company using uh, the biggest portion of downstairs, mm -hmm. and they left opening up uh, a very big space that we can now use as more war uh, warehouse capacity. Okay, nice. I might be able to show you later. Oh, it's nice. full of bikes. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, we'd love to. Yeah, should we just um, walk around a little yeah, bit? And, cool. and, you know, we'll yeah, just... Uh, Tell me what you want to see. No, uh, everything. No, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, okay, uh, I'll give you we a tour. You. We'll be quiet. Um, and, um, so now we have meeting rooms here. Okay, nice. And it's Friday, so it's not as busy as usual. Can we take a look inside of the meeting room? Because there's like 20,000 yeah. interesting things. Wow. What are these? Is it like a... Um, yeah, this is for music. We also have recently a karaoke machine. Yeah. So on Friday, some people that can sing, I cannot. Um, on Fridays when we have drinks at the end of the day, sometimes... Is that in your is like, corporate um, values that you kind of have these um, things or is it just something I that... I don't believe that our, yeah, our corporate values, we've, it's all organic. So yeah. there is no document or no... No guidelines or anything? No. Uh, we just hired a very good senior HR person yeah. that might bring more of a structure in yeah. this. But everything that happens is just a, a kind of a flow. Yeah. The last night I had a great dinner. We had a dumpling party with my team. Yeah. I just went to someone's house, made dumplings, and it just happened to be Chinese New Year also this nice. week. Yeah. Um, so we kind of celebrated that. It's, it's not a structured thing that we... Uh, yeah. But it, but it happens, and because yeah, we enjoy working together. Yeah. What is your role at FunMove? We haven't. Yeah, my role is head of communications. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means uh, bringing structure in how we communicate to the outside world. Mm -hmm. And a large portion of my job, where I'm focusing right now, is on PR. Yeah. So we'll make sure we'll make a nice nice video here. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What is this bell? Uh, this bell is a bell. I don't know where it came um, from. Yeah, I, I'm um, not. I'm not gonna ring it because some, probably you have to give drinks. Then the bike free drinks will come. To <laughs> really? Uh, no. <laughs> I'll give free um, drinks. What we use it for is um, when we have in the last couple of years. Uh, every year we brought out a new bike. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, when we announce the bike, it's often on a pre-order, and then we think, okay, we'll sell this many bikes or sell this many bikes in the next 24 hours, and everyone makes a guess, uh, and then they open up the pre-order, and then here we're with the whole team, because um, uh, we sell all our bikes directly right. to our customers, so okay. we have the e-commerce team and the developers and the online team, and then we can see how the numbers go up, and then every target we reach, then we ring the bell. Okay, because now we have the screen in the Hamburg office, right, with the subscriber numbers, so yeah. we also yeah, need a bell same like thing. Then you, you ring a bell when you hit a target. Yeah. <laughs> nice, cool. Yeah, I love it. I can give you a peek here. It's not pretty, but then you get a sense of how the building works. This is... If you look down here, Ooh. this is the back side of where the bike doctor is. So here are all the bikes for repairs. Oh, okay. So this is like the garage with all the... Yeah, where it gets really messy. How many repairs are there? I mean, I love the saying in, in, like in the beginning that, you know, it doesn't normally need treatments on a regular place, yeah. but it needs some love. Yeah. Every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, every now and then it needs some love. We have about 100,000 almost riders worldwide. Wow. And we've been selling bikes for 10 years, and a lot of our bikes are in Germany okay. uh, and in Holland, in yeah. Amsterdam. 
so yeah, we have plenty of customers and bikes that need love. Yeah. I think if you count all these bikes, they're about 50 to 100 at any given time mm -hmm. um, of customers that were. Uh, yeah, so they're all on. being brought back here for care. You don't yeah. have any like bases in, for example, Germany or something like, let's say. My uh, we have bike a shop is, in Berlin. Oh, you have one in yeah. Berlin. So, so in case most my bike gets broken in Hamburg, you would have it shipped to. If your bike gets broken in Hamburg, it's a bike. So you can bring yeah. it to any ordinary okay. uh, bike yeah. shop. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to like bring it all no. back here. Or something. No, if something happens to the tech, mm -hmm. our bikes are designed that you can take the smart module out yourself and it's mm -hmm. only packaged like this. Mm -hmm. So you just send it to us by airmail and then as you send it, you're already receiving one from us. So nice. it won't take you too long being not able to bike. Yeah, yeah. very, very exciting. So you don't to have to one. go to a shop. That's yeah. the idea. Actually, the um, Judith, who we just met from Herhun Lab. Yeah. Um, don't know if you've heard of her. She has several books and uh, is all about planting in offices in general. Really nice. Oh. And she's like, oh, you're seeing from Mauve. I actually have one sitting right here. So, yeah. Oh, nice. nice. Oh, I might want to get in contact with her because uh, I think plants really add to what, what an office feels like. And with we our redesign, have, maybe we can have some more plants in. We have, um, I mean, she is a very inspiring person. Yeah. I would say we had a really, really good time. And I love, oh, I'd be curious. I love the contrast also of tech on yeah. one hand. I mean, that's what we do. We yeah. into, you know, focusing on digitalization. So yeah, and the services better, of it. Yeah. yeah, and faster and more efficiently. But then at the same time, I think people need to reconnect with nature. And I mean, yeah. that's also what you do, right? You don't yeah. ride the bike inside, you ride it in a forest, you ride it outside, it, yeah. so the, the connection is really, really, really nice. Yeah, and if I think of the workspace, what well, my favorite spots are the little corners, and I love the fact that we, yeah. this is our creative room, the room that um, the marketing team mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I use. So it was, this was the, um, when we started, uh, this was like the, the worst room to be in. It mm -hmm. was white walls, there was a big ugly table in the middle, it wasn't easy to get around or to come into. It, was, it didn't feel nice, mm -hmm. this room. Um, and then on one afternoon, we thought, hey, let's own this. And we bought some paint. We didn't even ask Taco. We bought some paint. We stuck this on the wall. Uh, we ordered. We got that at, at uh, Ikea um, and then made it ours. Yeah. And then we bought plants ourselves and we bought this one. Yeah. Um, and then now it's a very nice room and uh, we're sharing it with other teams, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's a bit empty, but usually you see all our plans here on the wall and this is no, where we share also presentations. Nice the, that you, uh, you yeah. know, you have the kind of construction here. You have your bikes integrated yeah. in there, which this is, is amazing. The very, uh, this is, I'm the very first ever Vamov bike. This is the first uh, frame design, this one. Cool. So there's a lot of emotion in this room as well. Some history. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And here's some team outings that we did. Do you do uh, tours with the team? Like, bike? Mm. Uh, we all, most of us all live in Amsterdam, so if we go somewhere for a drink, you're biking. Maybe that's a tour. Yeah, this is something new. We have a, a blog where we share some stories, like mm -hmm. the back, uh, um, back stories to for most growth or yeah. our vision and one of our copywriters that's responsible for the blog uh, she thought hey there are way more stories in Vamov uh, than that she might know yeah so here's a box where you could send your um, uh, your tips nice <laughs> these are little telephone like cabinets yeah. yeah you built them yourself yeah uh, yes it, uh, yeah. we had them build ourselves yeah. yeah designed for the space and the space was a little bit different back then yeah um, so here you see most of the office. This is all support. Mm -hmm. um, so they're uh, speaking to clients from everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so we have uh, German speaking, Dutch speaking, English speaking, uh, French speaking. And here we have the marketing team. Mm -hmm. So you have copywriters, designers all working at one desk. What do you do to integrate all the cultures? There's many languages, many different cultures. Like, yeah, how the, do you grow together as a team? Well, we're also close to each other. Mm -hmm. I think that's the trick. Yeah. And we speak English so that everyone can understand each other. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we yeah, work in one space together. You have to work together across teams to get stuff done here. So. Then you're always in contact with other people, or most of the time in contact with other people. And we mm -hmm. have lunch together and have drinks together. Mm -hmm. I think that's... On a regular base? Is there like like uh, all, all, every day or is it like a lunch? Like yeah, a lunch is lunch? always... Lunch is lunch. You yeah, yeah and it's all mixed, lunch. everyone uh, yeah. together. Yeah, nice. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, and then this is operations, and that is finance and business to business. Mm -hmm. Over here yeah. is R and D, oh. and if you film it, you have to film it very quickly because this is your head of R and D. <laughs> and this is where all the secret stuff happens. They're working on improving the app, yeah, which has a five star rating. All the magic. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, and they're improving the bike uh, and the app. This is Sammy, he's a genius. He yeah. just um, made it possible that our bike uh, locks and unlocks when you use your uh, Apple Watch. Wow. <laughs> so he says, Siri, unlock my bike, and then it unlocks. So, but it only works with your voice? It doesn't work with anyone else's voice? Um, on, your, on your own Apple mm -hmm. Watch, yeah. uh, it works on Siri, so however Siri works, and that's on voice. So do people put, or other way around, do Germans people put, do Germans put an extra lock on their bike or do they really leave it unlocked in the street? Um, that is hard to tell for certain because I don't speak to all the riders in yeah. Germany. I, myself, when I ride the S2, mm -hmm. um, I use the kick lock and I use a separate uh, lock, lock to lock it yeah. onto something else. Which is this one or? Uh, yeah, this one, all the shiny ones. Mm -hmm. What are so these are these are the bikes? Yeah, let's see if this one's oh. This is is this for younger children or ladies' bikes? Uh, no, yeah, that's just a different design. This is a bike that we designed for Tokyo. Oh, this one isn't on. The the yellow one? Yeah. yeah. Is that something you can buy also with the yellow or um, this design we continued but not the color. Yeah. So this color is Too exclusive. Is that, is like the 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 uh, yellow is free, it's all copper uh, corporate color as well. Uh, yeah, we do flag. we do so corporate like, bikes. We we <laughs> do B two B deals. So some uh, uh, some bigger orders yeah. we can make it again. Yeah. Um, nice. But our yeah the idea behind this was that. Um, Uh, Japan would be a new market for us, mm -hmm. uh, but these types of bikes wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. um, so Why is that? Um, they're uh, the how Are they people smaller a little bit. Uh, it's not about the size; it's about uh, living. Okay. So in Japan, people will live in smaller houses. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to have a bike that's more nimble that you can carry on your shoulder and take yeah. upstairs if you want to right. to charge. Uh, or when you're riding, you might want a more playful. Uh, ride, yeah. and that's what this bike turned into being, and so it was really so successful. So around, around the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was so. Japan was the inspiration for it, and then the design uh, turned to be uh, so successful that we continued with the frame shape, mm -hmm. but in different colors. So these both come in um, uh, gray or white. That's the only two colors we do. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, this is the rest. Here is um, designs. I don't know if we're going to show these, but they're um, iterations on what the future shops will look like. Okay. So the idea, I can tell you the idea behind our future mm -hmm. shops, and that's a process that we started, let's say, this month, and mm -hmm. in the next couple of months, we're rolling out in all our shops worldwide. Mm -hmm. The uh, philosophy is that our shops are uh, a space that reflects what our vision of a future city could look like. So mm -hmm. it's It's open, it's spacious, it's light, it's green. Uh, you come in to service your bike um, more so than uh, it's a place to buy something. Um, yeah, so that's what the choice of materials and the usage of space should look like. So a lot of uh, wood and organic materials with um, places where you can sit and green and good explanations of the bikes and it should be very easy to grab one and try one. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Should we go downstairs to the shop and the bike doctor? Absolutely. I'm going to go through here. Thinking if oh, there's anything This is also nice. You have a birthday calendar for yeah. all the... All the yeah. what, are, what are these, actually? Because um, I saw that before. Yeah, we kicked, off, uh, we kicked off the year this year mm -hmm. uh, with a big town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. So teams from all the other countries came to Amsterdam and we had one day of inspiration where Uh, Tis and Taco shared their, uh, their, the goals that we have for this year. Yeah. Um, and Get yeah. the music going. Yeah. <laughs> and there was a, a visual artist nice. there on the day and she made all these sketches. Cool. Yeah. It's really nice. What's your so office like? 
So right now we with another company together. Yeah. Um, but we're also looking into um, finding our own space. Uh, yeah, we haven't, uh, like what we're looking for, we haven't found it yet. So. Mm, okay. yeah. And is it in Hamburg or Berlin? Yeah, it's in both. We have ah, based okay. in Hamburg and okay. Berlin. Okay. Hello. Hi, hi. These are the bike doctors. They give the bikes all the love they need. <laughs> nice. So here's very how you organized see, love. You see some of the uh, smarts coming out. Yeah. My. Um, I'm just rechanging my my Instagram description into a lover of uh, screws and glitter because I love oh, the well. kind of getting my you know getting the hand dirty. Um, yeah, I'm not so much. I mean, I am. You should come here for a day. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have a boat that I work on, so oh, a cool. lot of wood and you know nature oh, and cool. like this kind of yeah. Is it getting uh, any glitter? Well, the glitter, I, you know, that's yeah, why I, I need the color and everything <laughs> <laughs> because there's no glitter there. Like really, no glitter there. Wow. Yeah. So this is a space uh, which is, uh, I think, three days old that we have this space. There was another okay. company in here okay. before. Yeah. It was full of big, expensive machines. Um, and now it's full of bikes. Yeah. So they're uh, yeah, finding a way of organizing Is this going to stay the, the bike area? Because you yeah. said you want to rearrange Yeah, like, this will be warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope a little bit of office space. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you see, there's not much natural daylight coming in. Yeah. Especially what's behind that? Is it just... Um, yeah, we'll go here. This is an office space. from the outside or...? Uh, is it open? Yes. <laughs> oh, they locked it. Okay, this is an office space in here. Yeah, you can look in. Uh, and this will be... This oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there. I can see it. It's there another room, those, yeah. basically. Yeah, so I think another... It almost looks so. like a student room, like what yeah. we used to, you know? Yeah, it's a big student room. You're happy if that's true. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, A little bit. No, maybe not. It worked a little bit. So I think as R&D is expanding so much, they're going to get that room. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. There'll soon be more than 10. And then we have teams in all the other countries, in Taipei and in New York. And so... Um, how do you, how, what are you going to do to the space upstairs? Like, are you going to break it open a little bit or? Um, I hope, um, we have an architect that's working on this. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that the acoustics would improve. I like the idea of all working together in one space. You have to talk to Rashid. <laughs> oh yeah? <laughs> he's the former, he's the former designer of um, uh, WeWork. Yeah. He has his oh, own cool. company yeah. and he's based on, He's, he um, came from Europe, so he's really based on acoustics. He's all about acoustics. Perfect, because oh, that's oh, the oh, thing, yeah. that's the first thing that I would improve upstairs. Yeah. Because if you get the acoustics right, then you can keep the space nice and open. Because as you're mentioning, how do you get the, or, or yeah. keep teams like integrated or yeah. in touch with each other? Walls won't help that, but walls no. will help with the concentration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, there's many, many ideas on and solutions, of course. It really. Um, so what I love about Rashid's approach is he always designs the space around the people. Yeah. It's always about the people, so you need to really take a close look on how the people work and yeah. communicate. But that's the only way to do it. Otherwise, yeah. it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So there's uh, so many thoughts. Yeah. So where do um, where do the bikes um, start? Like. Um, what is if if I'm interested in a bike? Yeah. Um, I, I, well, in fact, I am. <laughs> I don't have one. Get my sales pitch ready. <laughs> Get your sales pitch ready. Mm -hmm. I have a child, so we mm -hmm. have to take that in consideration. Yeah. Um, yeah. We where have would uh, I, bike where would seats I that fit on all the bikes. Okay. So where would I? Um, what would be your your questions or how? Um, is there one bike for women and one bike for men, or is there no, different ones? No, our designs or? are unisex, but we have two frame designs. So mm -hmm. over there, you see the straight frame. Yeah. Uh, and you see the X the frame. The lower frame. Yeah. yeah. So the X frame has a, a lower step in, so if you're wearing a skirt, it's more comfortable. Yeah. Um, and all bikes, uh, uh, we have seats that fit on them for children. Let's, let's take a look here yeah. quickly. And then there's two kinds, but you can hardly see the difference. These are the electric ones, and these are the smart ones. Okay, so this is a smart one. Yeah. What does smart mean? It means there's rider recognition. The, this mm -hmm. is where you approach and it mm -hmm. wakes up uh, because it recognizes your you mm -hmm. through your phone. 
uh, automatic lights, and if it gets stolen, then you have the theft defense that kicks in. Mm -hmm. And the alarms, of course, if someone else is uh, and trying to see And how much would it be? Uh, 898 euros. Okay, that's not even, um, that's not even bad. I mean, compared to other bikes, it's not super expensive. Yeah, so. it's not cheap, but it's a, it's a very good price for the quality yeah. of these bikes because we design everything on it ourselves. Yeah, because I heard like the bikes were like a lot more expensive, but that's probably, I, I mean, I well, don't Well, the know. electric bikes, an electric bike is mm -hmm. more expensive, of course, because there's Cause uh, you don't have the to batteries do the and the motor in it. <laughs> Um, this one the, uh, is in a pre-order right now, so you can mm -hmm. reserve it uh, for 100 euros. And right now, since it's in the pre-order, there's a thousand euros off. Mm -hmm. So I think it's about 2,300, mm -hmm. 2,400 euros. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where are the bikes made? Um, we designed them here uh, between Amsterdam and our Taipei team. Mm -hmm. uh, large portion of the production is done in Taipei, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, they're assembled there and then I think the finishing touches are done in Utrecht. Yeah. So I have to check that for you. And then for the US market, the finishing touches are done over there. Yeah, why is it tight P? Is there a reason? Like yeah, apparently, I didn't know this either, but apparently 90% of all bikes in the world are made in Taiwan because okay. they're just the best. They have okay. the best technology, the best uh, heritage, the best knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Why did you, how did you, I mean, I don't know anything about your company, so where, where did you um, how did this whole journey start? Like, did you just all of a sudden wake up with an idea of uh, we need to reinvent the bike? Yeah. Or? Um, well, it wasn't me. It was a Thies and Tackle, yeah. two brothers, two Dutch brothers. Yeah. Um, and they had the idea of, hey, biking as we do it in Amsterdam. So he probably has That's a the problem bell. with the alarm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not great. Um, yeah, they thought biking is so easy in Amsterdam, it's so effortless, it's our uh, main mode of transport. Mm -hmm. They were imagining what would it be like if in other cities in the world it would be as accessible to bike. And that meant reimagining what a bike can do. Mm -hmm. That meant making a bike that is a good alternative to maybe a car or uh, the metro for mm -hmm. your transportation. Mm -hmm. Oh, so what a, I mean, Hamburg is. Uh Hamburg is amazing for you know riding a bike, fact, yeah. but there's not a lot of streets that you can actually. I mean, in Germany, I find that a bit difficult still because um, it's not yeah like by paths, for example. Yeah, like, I used to ride here, and it's really like the bike comes first, mm -hmm. and then there's nothing, 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 and then in position like 110, there comes the car. Whereas yeah. in Germany, there's the car, and then there, it's the other way around, long, long, long time, nothing, and then there's yeah. the bike. Yeah, so, that's true. Um, I'm the wondering how we can adapt um, more to the... Yeah, I wonder about this too. I know that bike culture is so important and so, um, uh, so much part of the Netherlands way of moving from A to B. It's very clear uh, on the streets that the bike has even, according to the law, the bike has priority over a car. Uh, so that means through the law bikes are very much protected in other countries and other cities, it's not always the case. I hope that a way to do that is to, uh, as is happening right now, that there's um, more awareness for bike safety and that uh, we can nudge city councils to consider bike safety and, and inspire them for new initiatives. Um, but that also uh, takes some time. And I think, as you see in New York right now, um, the more people that start riding the bike, yeah. uh, the more pressing an issue it becomes. So I remember the there's this uh, video of uh, Casey Neistat. I don't know if you know exactly riding that. the bike. Yeah, it's exactly hilarious. That. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I really we'll do link believe. It in the description. It's, it's a, it's yeah, a funny it's, video. It's very funny. <laughs> I believe that in time, um, it is, it will be a natural progression that in other cities you'll feel more safe, there'll be more initiatives, more bike paths. You're, you're already seeing it right now in major cities, mm -hmm. um, but there's a long way to go. Yeah. <laughs> well, but uh, let's ride the future. I mean, it sounds, it sounds promising. It's ambitious. It uh, looks super cool, for sure. I'll test one. Uh, yeah, let's get, get you on oh, one. Well, you now? I can get you on, uh, on one to try. MP, like. do you want to try? You need to film or you, you're you, missing you out. You're missing out. No, I don't know. No, but it's for me to try it. So I'll try it and I'll try it from above. We can all, you know, we'll... Yeah, do it later. Okay, let's go upstairs. Is that the alarm that goes on and off? 
Uh, no, that's so the bell. You, oh, that's the bell? Yeah. What is the, is the alarm like super, super loud? Uh, the alarm has two phases. The first phase is it's kind of friendly. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe your bike is parked outside of a bar and someone's parking another bike uh, beside it and they it, have no bad intentions. Okay. Uh, then it's a friendly alarm. And Can then we see the, the friendly alarm? Yeah. Can we hear it? And maybe I'll we see. don't want to hear the unfriendly alarm, but yeah. I I'll don't see need in to. in the back if I have a bike, but I think. Don't worry about it. You know, if we don't, that's also. Yeah. I'll just see if I have one for you. Yeah, and then the second alarm is a little bit more aggressive. Oh, here. Hello. Can I let them hear Hello. the alarm on a bike? Yeah. Uh, which bike can we <laughs> use? You have to lock a bike and then... Uh, can I try on this one? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's the new one. So I'm not sure if it's activated. Uh, no. No. Okay. You can try it. Let's try on this uh, one. That one. Oh, yeah. Uh, rocket first. Yeah, it's it's on that. Yes. Never yet. Okay. Yeah, and it's awake. So here you can see it's awake because it has it's the, awake. it had the breathing. Yeah. In the display, and this is how much battery you have. So when you uh, approach the bike, it recognizes you via your phone and then it wakes up. Okay. And then if you ride it and you want to park it, you, uh, you tick the back wheel. Okay. And then wow. now it's locked. Now it's locked? Yeah. And then it so goes to sleep because it knows you don't want to use it. Okay. And I approach it now and then the alarm goes on? Oh. Yeah. How does then it, it work? Then it will go off. It, it needs a second to go properly to sleep. Just like when you're uh, shutting down your phone, it needs yeah. a second. Uh, so now if you're a thief and you try to uh, shake it, so maybe you're parking... Oh, oh we're connected. Oh, we have to disconnect. When you connect, uh, uh, do you know which one? As, uh, uh, yeah, Lira, maybe you should... Uh, I can just turn off the Bluetooth. Yeah. There was a little skull on yeah. here. Yeah, the, tr yeah. the, the thing is, <laughs> as, a, as a owner, if you are in range of your bike, it you yeah. automatically connects and it checks the... You know the code? if you're the owner and then it automatically turns off the, uh, the alarm of course right but if you're not around and what the what means what means you're the around the like how much how, how much can you go away from the bike well it's up to you it depends a little bit from the the, the phone not all phones have a, the, the same range mm -hmm. yeah, it depends per type but uh, you can actually calibrate yeah, yeah in the it. app you say okay. I want it far so or as close a user, okay. you can decide yourself yeah the thing is for instance if you you tend to use your bike as a transport for going out for a drink, for instance, and you park your bike outside the pub and you're drinking inside. You don't want your phone to be connected. Yeah, so then you I agree. To the, to the, to okay, the so you can also adapt it by exactly. on the go. Nice. Good code needs. Sorry? I don't know the code for the bike. Oh, you want, so to, you want to demonstrate so, this, right? Yeah, yeah this, is the, this is the first alarm. Okay. So then you have the little skull. And that's a, um, yeah, it's a little joke of R&D. And it's so that anyone knows, hey, this bike is, this, this, uh, this bike is smart and did you come is up warning you. Well, we all did. <laughs> and then if you continue, that takes a minute. So, we have to wait a minute. And that means if you really try to speed it, so we have to wait a little longer. Can you longer. just carry it very softly? Like, will it maybe not? <laughs> you can try. <laughs> you're like laughing. You you're, you're, you're like, who is this girl? I <laughs> no, you cannot uh, do that. The thing is, we don't want the bikes to go into an alarm mode or when, uh, when you touch it accidentally, so when you park at a central station. Right. There's a lot of yeah. passing by. Yeah. So we want to distinguish the, uh, Come on. the thief from uh, somebody that mm. accidentally touches the bike. So we give the bike like one minute or at least to, 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 to be left alone. Yeah. If that doesn't happen, it goes into, uh, into this uh, uh, second alarm mode. That's yeah. what you're trying to demonstrate, right? So the, the thing is here, this is also the latest firmware bit, so we're, we're testing the new uh, <laughs> timers. Hey, it's not yeah. really funny. I, I disapprove of this timer. <laughs> It's not the right bike to demonstrate because uh, yeah, we're in R and D. It's really, it's I'll let really you guys, loud. I'll let you guys. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. What the but is. that brings me to the next question: like, who's hunting the bikes? Yeah, okay, sorry to leave you with the alarm now. <laughs> no, it's okay, but, uh, oh, 
Yeah. Oh, Thank you. see. Oh, I don't see the bike countries. So it's in. already. I mean, I can't move. Yeah, I can imagine it's really annoying yeah. when, like, you pick up the bike and it makes noises. Yeah, and, and then the next one it. is. Yeah. That's how it sounds. And then yeah. uh, after a while, when that continues, then yeah. the bike thinks mm, I'm getting stolen, and it goes into shutdown. Yeah. So not only is the back wheel blocked, so mm -hmm. no one can actually use it as a bike. And you can't unblock it because it's all integrated in the There's wheel. There's probably also a video on the alarm on your. Uh, yeah, I could I could so share we'll you what link it that in the like, description. Yeah. Um, we'll just put a link in there. Yeah, and then the bike goes into shutdown mode. Mm -hmm. That means the motor won't work, the lights won't work, um, and then the tracking kicks in. Yeah. So what we done what we've done there is oh, let's go in here. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've done there is that you can't the bike is useless to any thief. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's all also in shutdown, which means it's saving batteries so that you have the longest possible um, uh, uh, tracking. Yeah. So even so after weeks, we can still track the bike. Yeah. So then someone comes and uh, from your side, like in case the bike gets stolen, mm -hmm. yeah, someone manages to. Um, so then one of your bike hunters. Yeah, I didn't. I, they're not in they're right not now. There. I can they're having ask, lunch. <laughs> I, yeah, they might be out. I can ask Nathan. Um, but no worries, he's on the like telephone. We'll just... He uh, manages the bike hunters. Yeah. Um, yeah, that might be nice. Um, yeah, so they go out on a hunt. You can see the, uh, the location mm -hmm. uh, on a map. Mm -hmm. So you see the coordinates of the bike, and then they follow it and they plan, they plot a mission how to retrieve it. Yeah, and, and then they go out. How does it work? I mean, like, like let's say a bike was taken into the mountains of you know whatever and it's not mm. easy to get there like is there do you yeah. like how do you do it do you go by budget or do you go by no we go we go by mission find yeah. back the bike and make find sure a bike. customer gets their bike uh, within two weeks otherwise we replace it right um, but what we see is that um, the, so the data of mm -hmm. the bike hunters and the stolen bikes show that there's typically two sorts of stolen bikes mm -hmm. Either your bike gets stolen, and whether it's, it's the same in Paris, it's the same in Hamburg, same in Amsterdam, gets stolen and stays in, in the a, area. Yeah, in the area. Right. And then is resold or whatever, and then we find it there. Or it's stolen from a city and then very quickly moved to Another Eastern country. Europe, Southern Europe, farther away. Yeah. Um, yeah, and those are, of course, more extensive bike hunts. And yeah, yeah, some of those we filmed, like the time we went to Casablanca to find back a bike yeah. uh, or went to Ukraine. Yeah. And every now and then a bike gets too far from us. And then if, that's, if it's an impossible mission, then yeah. someone gets a replacement bike sooner. Yeah. We'll, link the, we'll link the hunting, uh, tracking down the bike uh, in the description as <laughs> yeah. well. Some of them are fun. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing some insights. Yeah, cool. Is there something that um, we haven't talked about, like, um, mm. except you're conquering the world I, with, <laughs> with bikes? With I liked your questions about, it got me thinking about how you use a space and mm -hmm. how, uh, how a space is also organically uh, used. So I don't know, there's, there's only more thoughts that you planted in my head after this conversation. So thank you for that. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm happy that we... That we found our way here, yeah. and uh, I mean, this is an amazing space as a as a base. There's potential. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's potential. Um, it's very messy. Is, well, that you know, it's only it's authentic, and um, I think you have you put your heart into this. Um, you can see that, and mm. then from there you can start. And I think there's um, I love the idea of the connection with the with the plans and the technology. Like mm. it's a nice contrast. It fits um, your corporate, the, the yellow and the black, it fits it really oh, yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure you'll have a very exciting journey ahead. Yeah. Yeah. We'll come back you should, when yeah, the new office is designed, you. so we make a before and after yeah, comparison. I'll let you know what it looks like. I like the idea that we're so close to the shop, though, mm -hmm. because we could also, as a headquarters, as you see with other companies, that, oh, we grow and, oh, it's a... Um, uh, it's, yeah, it's a, we're, we're an organization, we're professionalizing, let's go to a big fancy office building yeah. somewhere else uh, where it's all sorted. And I, I love the fact that we're growing within this building, staying so close to the shop. I love that it's an open space up there that you can yeah. look through into the shop, speak to riders. Yeah. Um, and for me, it's a good, um, always, always reminder. good, yeah, a good reminder of hey, how do people actually use these bikes? Because yeah. it's, it's easy to, to lose yourself in fancy marketing ideas or 
advertising, um, how you can brag about this product. But yeah, what really counts is just seeing riders being happy or unhappy uh, with the ride or the service or something that happened. Uh, and yeah, I think that makes the work better. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, yeah, Caroline. Thank you. Um, we'll uh, put all the things we talked about in the description. Yeah, cool. Um, so uh, you guys can follow up. Uh, if you liked the content, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, <laughs> watch another video here. And also, we're very happy to uh, answer comments, like if people yeah. have remarks, yeah. feedback. Cool questions, uh, questions, ideas about the workspace. Um, it's in transformation. So you have the chance to maybe, <laughs> maybe uh, suggestions. Leave, yeah, make suggestions, <laughs> leave some idea on how to um, break up the open space a little bit, make it a bit less noisy, make it a bit easier to communicate. And thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.